Hey there and welcome to video 8.2 where we're going to continue our discussion on chemical equilibrium and we're going to expand on what we did in the last video and apply it to some new situations. So let's get started. Oh, this generation gap starting to hit me. I don't suppose you know the song Ice Ice Baby. I should put that in the background because I'm always playing it when we talk about this thing. So this guy's name is Vanilla Ice, and he made a song called Ice Ice Baby, which the chemists then used to create this great tool to solve problems. So let's take a look at this Ice Ice Baby problem. I got two sulfur trioxides forming two sulfur dioxides and an oxygen. A student placed 3.5 moles of pure SO3 in a one liter container and allowed the reaction to reach equilibrium. She found that the equilibrium concentration of SO3 was 2.10 moles per liter. There was some SO2 and O2 present, but these were not measured. What is the Kc for this reaction? Well, we know that the Kc value is going to be equal to SO2 squared times O2 divided by SO3, SO3 squared, but we don't have the data to plug in there. All we know is that they started with a certain condition, and we do know that at equilibrium, the value of SO3 was 2.10 moles. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that there in a minute. But I want to, first of all, use my ice ice baby table. So you'll notice I've listed the SO3, the SO2, and the O2 on the left. And I've got the ice ice baby on top. So what these stand for is initial change and equilibrium. Initial change equilibrium. So let's plug in what we know. A student placed 3.50 moles of pure SO3 in a one liter container. So the initial concentration must have been 3.50 for SO3, but it said it was pure SO3. So I know the initial concentration of SO2 and O2 was zero. What else do we know? She found that at equilibrium, the concentration of SO3 was 2.10 moles per liter. So I'm going to plug that in my ice ice baby table as my equilibrium. Now we can go through and answer everything else. C is change. I is initial. E is equilibrium. So if I start at 3.5 for an initial and drop to 2.1 for an equilibrium, what was my change? To go from 3.5 to 2.1 is a change of negative 1.40. Now we're going to go back and pay attention to our coefficients on our balanced reaction. You'll notice that sulfur trioxide and sulfur dioxide are at a 2 to 2 ratio. So if the sulfur trioxide dropped by 1.40, the sulfur dioxide must have increased because it's on the other side, by the same amount. It's a 2 to 2 ratio. Now, what about oxygen? If I look at the sulfur trioxide to oxygen, that's a 2 to 1 ratio. So the amount of oxygen always has to be half that of the amount of SO3. So this would have gone up by 0 0.70, half of that value. So you'll notice my change coefficients, I'm sorry, my change values 1.4, 1.4.7 are at a 2 to 2 to 1 ratio. These change values are always going to follow the reaction coefficients. Now we can fill in the rest of the table. Starting at 0 and going up by 1.4 gives me a 1.40 equilibrium value. Starting at 0 and going up by 0.7 gives me a 0 0.70 equilibrium value. Now I'm going to take my equilibrium data and insert it back into this part of the equation. And that gives me a value of 0 0.031 after that data is plugged into the old calculator. So ice, ice baby, initial change equilibrium. Here's our buddy vanilla ice a little bit later on. I must have been in the 90s, judging by the tattoos. Um, for the reaction H2 plus F2 
Platforms 2 HF, you know, it's looking for, let's see, what is the concentration? Oh, it gives me the KC uh, value this time. So I know that KC, it's always good to start off with an equilibrium expression when you're dealing with equilibrium problems. I'm going to need this sooner or later. So I'm just going to pencil it in here. Now I'll read the problem. If 0.106 moles of both hydrogen and fluoride are placed in a 1 liter container, what is the concentration of HF at equilibrium? So I do not have all the data here to solve. That means I'm going to have to do ice, ice, baby. So I'm going to take my hydrogen, my fluorine, and my hydrogen fluoride. Ice, ice, baby. And start plugging in what I know. 0 0.106 moles of HF, H2 and F2 are placed in a 1 liter container. So moles divided by liter gives me the concentration of 0 0.106 for both. Now, it doesn't say anything about the HF. I'm going to assume that's zero. Ooh, I don't have anything else to plug in. I do know that the KC is given here, but I can't use that yet. So we're going to have to do some variables. I don't know what's going to happen here. But I do know that the amount of HF, sorry, H2 and F2 have to both drop because there's no HF present, meaning that these guys are going to go down in concentration. This has to go up to get to equilibrium because it's starting at zero. It can't go down. So I'm just going to say that these guys go down by x. And if they go down by x, looking at my coefficients up here, I've got a 2 here, which means x, x, and 2x. The change column has to follow the coefficients. So it's a 1 to 1 to 2 ratio. I'm going x to x to 2x. This side is positive because the other guys are going to drop. Now, I have 0.106 minus x for the changes of those two, and 2x as the change for this one. Hmm. So let's take this data. 0.106 minus x and plug it into my KC expression up here. Except now I'm going to use some data because I know that the KC is actually 23.7. So 23.7 must equal my HF squared, which is 2x squared, divided by H2 times F2. Well, they're both 0 0.106 minus x, so I could do this. 0.106 minus x times 0.106 minus x is 0.106 minus x squared. Well, this works out really nicely because there are times, not that you're going to see them from me this first year, but you'll notice that it would be very easy to end up in a quadratic equation here. I've got 2x squared. I'm going to have an x term here. I'm going to have uh, some constant out in front. We won't paint you into a corner where you need the quadratic yet. Later on in chemistry, you can see how these quickly turn into quadratic equations, and I actually carry a quadratic solver on my calculator because I see so many of these in chemistry. But we have a way out of here. What we can do is because both sides are squared, we can take the square root of both sides. That's going to give me 4.87, and that will equal 2x over 0 0.106 minus x. So the squares have gone away. Square root of 23.7, 4.87. Let's move our 0 0.106 minus x to the other side and then distribute. So after distributing, I get 0 0.516 minus that 4.87x, still equaling the 2x. I'm going to add 4.87x to both sides. Then dividing both sides by 6.87 
gives me an x value of 0 0.075. Ha! <sighs> Wipe the sweat from my brow. Now what was I looking for? What is the concentration of HF at equilibrium? Well, if I come back to my data table, the concentration of HF was 2x at equilibrium. So if x is 0.75, running out of room, I'll come over here next to Ice's head and say, all right, my concentration of HF at equilibrium is 2x, and we know x is 0.75. So 2 times 0 0.0075. So my concentration of HF at equilibrium is 0 0.150, 2x. Huh. Exhausting. So again, in this particular case, our ice ice baby table needed a variable. So keep the variable in with your equilibrium expression, plug them into your mass action expression, and solve for that variable. Then go back and figure out what you need to do with it. In this case, it had to be 2x. Then simply plug it in and solve. So simple a child could do it, right? I like this problem a lot. We have a system where we have PCL5 in equilibrium with phosphorus trichloride and chlorine. So the system started with only PCL5 at a pressure of 0.95 atmospheres. When the pressure, I'm sorry, when the system reached equilibrium, the total pressure of the system was found to be 1.30 atmospheres. What is Kp for the reaction? Um, Kp is going to be equal to the pressure of the PCL3 times the pressure of the piece, I'm sorry, Cl2, divided by the pressure of PCl5. Again, I just like to start with that expression so I know what the heck I'm doing. Now, let's see here. Looks like I'm going to need to do an ice ice baby table. I've got the pressure of Cl5 divided by, I'm sorry, the pressure of the Cl3, PCl3, got the given an initial condition, the system started with only PCL5. I know I'm going to be doing an ice ice baby table. So who do I have in here? Phosphorus pentachloride, phosphorus trichloride, and chlorine gas. Ice, ice, baby. Let's plug in what we know here. The system started with only PCL5 at a pressure of 0.950. And it says when the system reaches equilibrium, the total pressure is 1.3. I can't really do anything with anything else in this equilibrium table again. So if something's starting at zero, it's going to go up by a certain amount. The thing I'm starting with has to go down. And it's all a one-to-one -one ratio. So I can easily figure out that this is going to go down by x, and these would have to go up by x. One-to-one -one ratio makes it nice. So, my equilibrium value, 0.95 minus x, initial change, this is x and this is x. Now, I don't know if you remember way back to when you were kids, but you learned Dalton's Law says, hey, the total pressure of the system is going to equal the partial pressures of the individual. We've seen that before. So now we know that the total pressure of the system was found to be 1.3 atmospheres. We know that the pressures at equilibrium are 0.95 minus x for PCL5, x for PCL3, and x for PCL2 or sorry, CL2. Hey, I can simplify this really quickly because you'll notice that I have a minus x here 
and a plus x here. So let's simplify our statement. Ah, that's easy. Let's just solve for our x value of 0.35. Now what are they looking for? The kp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this x value in for the x's here. So 0.95 minus 0.35 gives me 0 0.60 for an equilibrium concentration. The other two values are just given as x, and given that x is 0.35, I can insert them in for that value. Taking our equilibrium mass action expression and inserting those values, so my Kp equals the pressure of PCl3 times my pressure of Cl2 divided by my pressure of PCl5 gives me a value of 0 0.20 for my Kp. Whew. So that was a little bit tricky, huh? Not really. We just had to use that statement of Dalton's law to figure out what those x values were so we could use that in the equilibrium expression. We, I'm sorry, the ice ice baby table. So we had numbers to plug into our equilibrium expression. Whew. Last problem. System started with only PCL5. Hmm, you know what? Ooh, do you see what I see? As I just scanned this problem, I noticed we had a solid here. It also is looking for a Kp. So just to speed things up, I'm just going to write a little Kp expression over here. Kp is going to equal the pressure of the PCL3 times the pressure of the Cl2, but the PCL5 is a solid. So that's just over 1. So I really only need the pressure of the PCL3 and the pressure of the Cl2 to solve this. Now I'm going to read the problem a little more thoroughly. When the system reached equilibrium starting with only PCL5, the total pressure of the system increased by 1.30. So the system was starting with just a solid. It started creating gases. Obviously the pressure of the system is going to go up. So the pressure partial pressure of the PCL3 and the partial pressure of the Cl2 increased the pressure of that container by 1.30. I'm going to kind of gloss over the ice ice baby table for a second because I know this is a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning that these guys both have to be the same value. If it was like a one-to-two ratio, I would have to have an x to 2x. But I don't, so I don't. Let's see. My x value is clearly 0 0.65. Now, it wants to know what is the kp of the expression. Well, kp, as we see above, is simply the pressure of the PCL5, which is my x value, times the pressure of the Cl2, which is also the x value. You could write out the equilibrium expression, I'm sorry, the ice ice baby table for this, but I don't see a point because, hey, this is so simple a child could do it. Kp for this problem is simply 0 0.42. Ah, it's nice when you have a solid, we can ignore that. That made the problem really simple. So that pretty much does it for video 8.2 on chemical equilibrium. That's kind of fun, lots of little tricks, ice, ice, baby tables, and we'll have a little more practice with it soon, and thanks for sticking around. Bye.